what do you see when I show you this image? You're probably thinking Mario Kart, and you'd be right. But I want you to look closer. Ocarina of Time, Double Dash, and Mario Sunshine. Each of these games are over a decade old and are able to stand alone with some honestly amazing visuals. But for the time that they were released, they didn't have RTX graphics or lumen lighting. So how was Nintendo able to create such immersive graphics that stand the test of time? Well, there are three key elements, and they actually use some genius ideas that, to this day, are still being used in modern games. So let's go through these one at a time. Oh, oh, oh. For pretty much every game released in the early 90s, there's a certain appeal or style to them. They're blocky, low resolution, and simple. And this is kind of by design. You can't whip up a 20,000 poly model and slap that in game. The console would just explode. The blow. So Nintendo, much like other game companies at the time, had to find creative and ambitious ways to condense everything they need. And this is actually what allowed them to think outside the box and push their graphics year after year to create the Nintendo aesthetic. I'm talking, of course, about limitations. And probably the biggest limitations they had was during the development of Super Mario 64. The hardware limitations on the Nintendo 64 were pretty insane. They had 4.5 megabytes of RAM, and at any given time, they could only use or call upon four of those megabytes. Not only that, but they were bound to using cartridges or game packs. The entire level design, textures, animations, and even sometimes your save file were bound to one of these. And for the case of Super Mario 64, they had to condense everything to a measly eight megabytes. Now, that might seem small, and it is, oh, no, man, that's huge. but this application of storage was a conscious choice, because the alternative were CDs. CDs held way more space, and that's why competitors like Sony were able to create huge games during that time. I'm talking like two discs worth of games. The only downside here slow read speeds. You could cook a three course meal, film the entire five avatar franchise, and hit the Yonkey Splunky, all before that PS1 loaded up crash. But the N64, plug and play. Okay, but in all seriousness, the game pack is what allowed the Nintendo 64 to excel in speed, performance, and graphics. Now, this is great, but why am I telling you this? Well, with such limited space, textures needed to be used in a smart and sparing way, because the texture cache was literally capped at four kilobytes. And now this is where it gets interesting because looking at Super Mario 64, you can quickly assume that this is stylized. And yes, it absolutely is. But what if I told you all of these textures are actually photo real? Oh, Look at the terrain here in Tiny Huge Island, or even the dirt paths in Bob Bomb Battlefield. These are all classic textures. And when you're playing this as a kid, it's not immediately apparent what's happening here, especially if you're not looking for it. Most, if not all of these textures are made using real world photographs. And back in the day, you couldn't just whip out your phone, snap a pic and slap that on your 3D model. You also couldn't go to textures.com and find the perfect PBR material. So how were developers like Nintendo able to get such high quality images into their games? Enter texture CDs, specifically Japanese texture CDs. These magical discs contain some of the most iconic video game textures, and once you see them, you can't unsee them. They had everything from stones and walls, all the way to things like skies, crystals, even the naughty stuff. <laughs> hundreds of images that appear in some of your most beloved games. This is such an amazing discovery because up until very recently, I honestly thought that Nintendo handcrafted all of these textures, but in actuality, they kitbashed them with these catalogs of real world photos. So for example, the dirt paths in Bob on Battlefield. These are actually just small sections of this rock image with the hue and saturation altered to look like a dirt path. The reason why these look so stylized is because of the texture work done to the images after the fact, which again, 
lends to that beautiful Nintendo aesthetic. Now, I need to give credit here to the Render96 wiki. The people running this site are actually archiving and sourcing the origins of these textures. And it's just an amazing resource to check out if you are interested in this stuff. And speaking of amazing resources, if you like this kind of learning, then you'll definitely want to check out my friend Southern Shotty's classes over at Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is a massive online learning community with literally thousands of classes for you to explore, learn, and create. Now, if you're like me, I love learning about the basics of how things are made, kind of like Nintendo's timeless graphics, which is why I've taken all of Southern showed his classes now and I want to highlight the class deep dive into texturing. He goes deep into the workflow of texturing basics with Blender and takes you from start to finish on how to bring this cute scout character to life. The reason why I love Skillshare is because it's not trying to grab your attention and send you down an endless rabbit hole of videos. Instead, it's an intentionally curated feed of topics that you get to choose and want to learn. Plus, there's no ads. I'm a long time user of their platform and they've hooked me up with an amazing offer for you. The first 1000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That's basically now till the start of 2023 that you could be learning for free. It's the best win-win. You get to learn from thousands of classes and I get to continue doing what I love, which is making free speed content for you guys. Grab your free month below and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, so now we know that even some of the earliest video game graphics were simply just photos. But to create immersive worlds and have them stand the test of time, photos simply aren't enough. Nintendo needed something else. Water and lava. These are some of the hardest things to emulate when you're working with simple textures. But Nintendo found a way to make these work. The secret? Scrolling textures. Now this is fairly easy to do. You just grab your lava texture, animate it going left to right on the UV channel, and that's it, you got lava. But there's an immediate problem here. The texture isn't seamless. So as soon as the animation loops, you can clearly see that it's just repeating itself. Not only does this take you out of the illusion that what you're looking at is lava, but it's very distracting. So how did they fix this in more modern games like Double Dash? Well, they applied layered textures. The moment you add a secondary lava texture, animate this in an opposite direction and scale it up a bit, the problem magically disappears. There's no clear indication as to where the texture starts and stops unless you're really looking for it. But it doesn't stop there. Things like displacement maps started to become more easily accessible. So naturally, they were thrown on top as well, and this in combination with multiple scrolling image textures creates a surprisingly believable lava pit. Now, this can actually be used on almost any kind of terrain and at a near infinite scale. This is why you can see tons of extra layered details in more recent titles like Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. These are the foundations of Nintendo's earliest games. And now that you know this, you'll start to see them all over the place. Now there's countless other ways that Nintendo has developed their signature look, and these alone could be full length videos. Textures, however, are such a key element when it comes to the look and feel of something. You could have a 20 million polygon character model, but without great textures, it's gonna look like garbage. And if you wanna fix that, you'll wanna watch this video right here.